We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are bringing you a special show on two very challenging problems farmers face in their maize fields. One, what can destroy your maize crop while it grows? And two, what can destroy your harvest if you don't take good care of your maize? Naomi and I visited farmer George in Mbita on the shores of Lake Victoria and we came face to face with two monsters, the maize stock borer and striger weed. Oh, they are very destructive. But we are going to learn how to deal with them using a technique called push and pull. While Tony is going to get help for the chicken, Naomi brought in an expert, Mr. Alois Ndiege from Isipe. He's an expert in maize and sorghum problems in this region. And as George has told us, he gets a very low harvest and we need to investigate. The first problem is this purple flower, which is strigerweed, also known as witchweed. Yes. It attaches itself to the roots of the maize yes. or sorghum. Yeah. And then sucks all the nutrients. Yeah. And therefore, you will not harvest anything. Mm. So. Alois goes on to explain that if you see short internodes on the maize, like this, then your crop has already been infested with striga, but it has not hit the surface yet. However, it would have already done 50% of the damage to your crop. But what can we do to prevent this? We are going to learn more about push-pull technology later. But first, Alois digs up one of the maize plants on the shamba and shows us exactly how the striga weed attaches to the roots of the maize plant and feeds off the maize plant. But that is not all. There seems to be more to learn from Alois as Naomi finds out. Alois tells George that if he uses push-pull technology, he can get rid of the stem borer pest. The desmodium that is intercropped to stop the striga weed also has a very bad smell that repels the stem borer pest. Napier grass is planted around the crop. It attracts stem borer moths away from the maize as it prefers to lay its eggs on the grass. As the moth lays its eggs, it punctures the napier leaf which then produces a glue which kills the larva. Alois shows us the actual stem borer pest destroying George's maize. What an ugly sight! George had big problems with his maize. It was being destroyed by striga weed and stem borer. He was advised that a farming method called push-pull technology could prevent both of this and help secure a good profitable crop in the future. Shamba Shape Up take George and Agnes to the Isipe Research Center to learn how to establish a push-pull crop. George, Agnes, Yes. Welcome to Isipe. Yes. In Isipe we do research yes. on different crops. Yes. Today you are going to be taught how to use push-pull using desmodium and napier. To plant your push-pull, first you must clear your land during the dry season. Plow your land to find soil particles. Mark your plot to plant three rows of napier grass around the border of the future maize field. Next. Plant the napier grass in a border around the maize plot. The spacing should be 75 centimeters between the rows and 75 centimeters between plants of napier within a row. Apply a handful of farmyard manure in each hole before planting. Place a three-node napier grass cane in the hole. Make sure two nodes are covered in the soil and be sure to water. Next, to establish the desmodium, it should be planted in such a way that the rows will alternate with maize rows. The rows of desmodium are planted at 75 centimeters apart. You can either plant desmodium seeds of which you will need about one kilo of seed for one acre of land. 
all, you can plant desmodium stalks. ECP recommend you plant with super phosphate fertilizer and manure. The stem borer moths do not like the smell of desmodium and so it will push them away from the maize crops. Desmodium also improves soil fertility and stops trigger weed from growing or attaching its roots onto the maize roots. Thus, the maize is saved. Now George and Agnes have learned the first steps of establishing push-pull. It's on to the next stage. This is our next point of action. Mm -hmm. Fine. I want to show you here, we have three lines of Napier. Mm -hmm. Fine, yes. We have one path yes. between Napier and Desmodium. Yes. Mm -hmm. And next, I want to show you how to plant maize in an established Desmodium plot. Ensure that the first row of maize is one meter away from the inner row of Napier grass. ECP recommends 75 centimeters between rows and 30 centimeters between holes in a row. Apply one teaspoon of TSP fertilizer per hole. Plant one maize seed per hole. This napier grass will attract or pull the stem borer moths away from the maize and so they lay their eggs in the napier and not the maize and the napier does not allow the larvae to develop into adults. The maize is protected and the napier grass is still safe to use as animal fodder. We are in our third stage of action. Mm -hmm. Just like I told you, the plot is surrounded with napier. Yeah, okay. I can see. And we have one path, yeah, yeah. space, yeah. Mm -hmm. between Napier and our plot. Yeah. In this plot, yeah. we already have maize, which is two weeks old. Fine. Mm -hmm. What I want to show you here mm -hmm. is how to manage maize in a desmodium plot like this. Okay. Okay. And especially when maize are still young as they are. It is very important to manage your push-pull well. After three and six weeks, trim the desmodium so that it does not overgrow in between the maize crop. These cuttings can be used as fodder. Plus, remember, keep your field weed-free. Eventually, your push pool will produce a healthy, pest-free crop. How do you see this maize? Hey, very wonderful, wonderful. And this is what your shamba will look like. That's great. If you yes. treat it well. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you are able to do yeah. all that I've told you today, fine. you will expect to have this kind of mess you are seeing here. Yes, yes. it's quite good. Yes, that's Very quite healthy, good. Yes. tall, yeah. and with big cobs. Fine. fine. You can see, you will expect to have this size of cob. Hey, this is wonderful. This is great. You will hey. so expect to have this kind of cob. So hey, very big. This is wonderful. You see? And yeah. in case yes. you are able to get such kind of harvest, mm. yes. you will get very good amount in terms of income. Once you have produced such a good healthy crop of maize, you have food security and money to pay school fees, medical bills and other expenses. Coming up after the break, aflatoxin. How do you prevent your maize from getting aflatoxin? Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. And now with the help of our partners, we want you to learn more on how to deal with this poisonous fungus called aflatoxin. All across Africa, people depend on maize as an important food. But if it is not grown and harvested properly, molds will be able to grow on the maize. 
These molds can develop further in storage. Some types of mold or fungus secrete aflatoxins, which are poisons that most farmers and consumers do not know about. These poisonous aflatoxins get into our food. Extreme poisoning can damage your health right away. If you eat less aflatoxin, it can take longer to make you sick. Aflatoxins damage the liver and kidneys. For those who eat maize which has aflatoxins, the effect may not be seen today, but it will surely show later or even affect their children. So I advise them not to continue doing that. It is very dangerous for people and animals to eat maize affected by aflatoxins. Moldy grain given to livestock and poultry passes the poisons on to the animals, reducing their productivity. The poisons end up mainly in the milk and to a lesser extent in the meat and eggs. When people eat products that have been affected by aflatoxins, they can get diseases like cancer or they can even die. Also, if you feed these products to animals, you can get poison through their milk. In this video, we will see where these molds come from, how they develop, and how proper cultivation and harvesting will help keep us safe from these molds. Certain molds grow on maize, groundnuts, and other foods. Some of these molds secrete poisons called aflatoxins. Aflatoxins are a byproduct of molds that live in the soil and feed on plant debris. You cannot see the molds when they are in the soil because they are very small, but when they get onto your maize, they can secrete a deadly poison. When we magnify the mold that lives on plant debris in the soil, we see that it is made up of tiny threads branching through the debris and obtaining nutrients there. A forest of tiny stalks sprouts from these threads. Each stalk carries chains of minute spores that are easily spread by the wind. The spores are far too small to see. When the spores land on the silk threads of the maize ear, the spores will germinate as we see here. The mold then grows from the silk threads and into the young kernels. Inside the kernel, the mold grows and secretes aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is colorless. But here we show it in yellow, so you can see how aflatoxin spreads inside the kernels. At the early stage, the kernels may still seem free of mold on the outside. But after the fungus has grown inside the kernels for some time, the kernels may change color, and the fungus may break through the surface of the kernels. If it does break through, the fungus produces masses of tiny stalks and millions of tiny new spores on the surface of the kernels and the ear. This is what we see as mold. So, now we know that these molds live in the soil and that the wind can carry their spores to the maize ears. Sometimes the kernels have mold and aflatoxin, but we cannot see them. The kernels look healthy, but they are not. Maize is more likely to become contaminated by aflatoxins when it is hot and the young maize suffers from drought. By adding manure and keeping crop residues in your field, you can keep the soil moist longer so your crop will suffer less. 
strong maize plants resist the fungus better I put cow manure and leave the leftover maize stalks in my field. This adds nutrients to the soil and strengthens our plants. The plant will be able to fight against moles and aflatoxins. Farmers in Tanzania also intercrop their maize with pigeon peas. Pigeon peas make the soil more fertile and strengthen the maize. On sloping land, you can conserve soil moisture by making contour bands. Some farmers grow fodder grasses to strengthen their bands. You can also plant early to ensure that your maize will suffer less from drought and heat while the kernels are growing. As the ears grow bigger, the maize husk protects the kernels from molds. When insects eat holes in the husk or if birds eat the tip of the maize ear, molds can easily enter and infest the entire maize ear. Maize needs water to grow, but as the crop matures, it needs to dry out. Wet weather around harvest time will make the mold grow faster. Aflatoxins comes from the parasite which develop when it is foggy. When fog enters the plants, it causes the maize to rot. Harvest your maize as soon as it is mature when the husks are whitish. The longer you keep your maize in the field, the more your maize may be damaged by insects and birds. You know your maize is mature and ready to harvest when the stalks turn pale brown and the maize ears point downwards. You can leave your maize to dry for a week or two while in the field. But don't delay the harvest too much, especially if you are expecting rain. When a late rain hits the dried ears and husks are damaged, the ears can easily get mold and aflatoxins. Inspect your maize field every few days. If it is drying nicely, you can leave the maize. But if it is starting to become damaged, you should harvest it right away. Harvest your crop in sunny weather because piles of damp maize ears are difficult to dry and molds will develop. When picking the ears, Remember that the molds that cause aflatoxins live in the soil. If you remove the maize ears from the husks in the field, you can put the ears directly into baskets or bags to carry them home so that the ears do not touch the soil. Many farmers in the highlands of Tanzania cut the dried maize stalks with ears and pile them for a week or so before collecting the ears. After removing the husk, check every ear carefully for molds and discolored grain. Because signs are not always visible, also remove very light ears because mold infested ears are much lighter than healthy ones. As the husk no longer protects the kernels, make sure the husked ears never touch the soil.
You can collect the healthy ears on clean mats or tarpaulins. I avoid aflatoxins during harvest by putting our maize on tarpaulins so it cannot catch dust because the dust causes aflatoxins. Sort out any infested ears or remove the parts with discolored grain. Throw them on separate piles and destroy them in a pit. Before bringing home the harvested maize, I separate the healthy ones from the ones which have aflatoxins. I collect the bad ones at one place and burn them. <laughs> Take your healthy harvest home to dry it further on a tapu leaf. So, what have we learned? Molds that grow on maize and on other food crops can develop deadly poisons called aflatoxins. These molds live in the soil can spread by wind and infest your crop when it suffers from drought, heat or injuries from birds and insects. By keeping your soil healthy and by planting early, your plants will be strong and less vulnerable to insects and molds. Once the maize is dry and the husk is whitish, harvest your maize within the next two weeks. Separate the healthy from the infested ears. Never put the healthy ears on the soil, otherwise molds will get on your maize and damage it during storage. Burn all the bad ears. Never feed them to your animals. People and animals should stay healthy at all times and never eat food with poisons.